now so what is the next point of our lesson number 2 microorganism friends and foe the harmful effects of microorganisms right harmful effects of micro organisms so these harmful effects means how they can cause harm to the environment and human life first of all we have to understand about food right as micro organisms are omnipresent omnipresent means they are present everywhere right so they must be present in our home also in our kitchen also so if you left food uncovered then definitely that food is going to be spoiled right this spoilage of the food spoilage of the food is done by microorganisms simple example right from we have been learning right from our fourth standard fungus right mold grows on the bread if you take a piece of bread and keep outside of the window and just add two three drops of water and soil particles within one two days you will be found that there are there is a growth of some something uh, cotton like fungus grown there and with the help of micro my magnifying glass if you observe them you will be seeing that such kind of you will found such kind of growth of so what it is a mucor what it is mucor or mold so the microorganisms are responsible for the spoilage of food food cannot be saved if it is uncovered microorganism definitely they will spoil so what should be done to keep our food to preserve it for longer period isn't it nowadays you can see packed food items are available isn't it at our home also when the uh, extra food leftover food is there at night after the dinner our mother is keeping it into the freezer even milk is also every day kept in the freeze so what is the reason the reason is that to keep safe to avoid spoilage of food so what is the method to save our food from microorganisms right so that method is called preservation of food and the chemicals which are used to stop the or to check the growth of microorganisms are called preservatives right so see here preservatives preservatives are the chemicals what preservatives are the chemicals added in into food to check the growth of microorganisms right so these preservatives are present at our home some simple preservatives salt is there right salt is preservative we are using salt in pickle where we are using salt salt in pickle right pickles are made in during the summer season and extra salt is added in it. to check the growth of microorganisms and to prevent and to keep it a uh, save it for longer time okay then next one is oil or vinegar right so this is also present in our kitchen so in pickle oils are kept isn't it and these are also checking the growth of microorganisms this is in pickles extra oil is also added for this purpose only is it then sugar right sugar is also checking the growth of microorganisms how you must have tested sweet jams right many types of squashes are there then murabba are there murabbas right avla ka jo murabba hota hai uske andar bhi extra ke sugar so these things are used as chemicals to check the growth of microorganisms now nowadays chips packets are there right did you see chips packet there is a no moisture present in the packet right the packet is completely dehydrated whatever the chips are there they are totally dry as you know that microorganisms are also living things they need food water and air and if you remove this content from the item then obviously what happens their growth will be inhibited their growth will be inhibited for example chips packet chips packets right biscuits are also there totally dry isn't it then 
the next important part of this preservatives is pasteurization method what pasteurization again louis pasteur louis pasteur discovered that microorganisms are only responsible for the spoilage of food what microorganisms are responsible for spoilage of food and milk so what should be done because microorganisms are everywhere they are present everywhere but what the method he has invented this this method is called pasteurization process nowadays whatever the milk packets are coming you might check you might have seen that pasteurized milk has been written on that so what is the reason what is the pasteurization process pasteurization is a special kind of treatment which is given to the milk right so what happened here first that milk is heated up to 71 degrees celsius for 15 seconds right so when we are heating the milk up to 71 degrees celsius for 15 seconds then some microorganisms definitely they will die they will die because they cannot bear the heat and as a result they will destroy right they will not do any harm to the milk and then again suddenly suddenly the milk is chilled up to 10 degrees celsius now you just see the difference between temperature so some organisms which cannot bear heat they will die up to the 21 degrees celsius right and some those who are able to survive in higher temperature they must be dying when the temperature is suddenly cool because they do not adapt suddenly so that the reason the milk is suddenly chilled up to 10 degrees celsius and because of that these organisms these microorganisms they die and as a result the milk will not get spoiled milk will be safe so this method is discovered by louis pasteur what is the name of this method this method is called pasteurization a process in which milk is heated up to 71 degrees celsius for 15 seconds and then suddenly chilled up to 10 degrees celsius which definitely inhibits the growth of microorganisms this process is called pasteurization it is discovered by louis pasteur right so dear students see we have learned about the preservatives right we have to use preservatives in our day-to-day -day life these chemicals which are added which have been added into the food to check the growth of microorganisms are called preservatives the example is salt oil sugar um, dehydrated food items and hot and cold treatment even fishes meat they are also completely preserved by the help of these preservatives chemical preservatives isn't it so you have to do learn and revise it do learn and revise it okay so nitrogen cycle one of the very important part of microorganisms right of this lesson because without nitrogen cycle or nitrogen fixation living things cannot survive isn't it do you know that nitrogen the composition of nitrogen in the environment is in our atmosphere is 78 percentage three fourth part of the atmospheric composition is consumed or we can say that constituent by nitrogen gas but plants neither plants nor animals take that nitrogen utilize that nitrogen directly from the atmosphere so but nitrogen is important for the plants as well as animals in our body also nitrogen is present in plants also nitrogen is present because plants require it for the protein synthesis without protein they cannot without nitrogen they cannot synthesize protein so nitrogen is one of the essential part or constituent of living things then how the mine this nitrogen is obtained by the plants and in animals so this is done because of microorganisms right so students we are going to understand the nitrogen cycle in detail right so this is called biological fixation of nitrogen right biological bio bio means again it is concerned with the life and some bacteria and fungi algae they are involved in it 
so that the reason this is called biological fixation of nitrogen now first of all we will see how it is happening and then we will go for each and every step in detail first of all you see that atmospheric nitrogen nitrogen is 78% in the environment right that nitrogen is going into the soil but directly it cannot go here what happens this nitrogen is converted into nitrogenous compound right nitrogen is converted into nitrogenous compound and that nitrogenous compound is absorbed by the plant right this nitrogenous compound means what happened nitrogen cannot absorb directly so it has to be converted right it has to be converted into the small or this uh, what salt that are dissolving water and that dissolved water right that dissolved salt inside the water along with the water these minerals are absorbed by the plants for the protein synthesis right okay and then it is used by the plants and then plants are eaten by animals animals they again produce nitrogenous waste through their excreta and when they die their dead body is again going into the soil by decomposition and then again this nitrogen is returned to the environment in the form of gases right how it is possible it is not so easy some microorganisms are involving in these processes right now look at this there are two three methods of nitrogen fixation into the soil the first method is biological in which microorganisms are used second method is physical method in that what happen whenever the lightning is there this lightning directly deposits nitrogenous this nitrogen into the soil right then third method is chemical method so chemical method means when the farmers they are using chemical fertilizers to spread on the uh, land to for the increase the fertility of the soil as well as the industrial waste in which chemically added liquor waste water is directly thrown on the ground or into the soil that is also the nitrogen fixation by chemical okay chemical method so now atmospheric nitrogen is there that atmospheric nitrogen first some bacteria and bacteria are the turns that atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia and ammonium ion right ammonia and ammonium ion this ammonia and ammonium ion they are toxic in nature so plants cannot utilize them right so some microorganisms they work on this ammonia and ammonium ion and they convert this into nitrites and nitrates so these nitrites and nitrates right these are the nitrogenous compounds so nitrites and nitrates they dissolve in water nitrites and nitrates they dissolve in water they are water soluble and along with the water once they get deposited under the soil under the soil so how it is possible because of some bacteria so nitrosomas bacteria nitrosomas bacteria is responsible to convert this ammonia and ammonium ion into nitrates and nitrites see how the important role is there then if see here if it is not converted then plant cannot utilize that nitrogen so before utilization this nitrogen are uh, must be converted into nitrogenous compound so that can be dissolved in water and when it get dissolved in water plants along with the water it get absorbed and utilizes it right utilizes it so understood so atmospheric nitrogen is there it comes into the environment and here under the soil so microorganisms and blue green algae bacteria and blue green algae converts into ammonia and ammonia and this process is called denitrification so in this process is called nitrification nitrification this process is called nitrification when the nitrification takes place it converted into nitrogenous compound and this nitrogenous compound dissolved in water it get absorbed by the worm we along with the water by plants and used for protein synthesis this is called assimilation assimilation this process is called assimilation for protein synthesis protein synthesis see without 
nitrogen plants cannot produce proteins and if the protein is not there the proper development of the plant will not take place so that's the reason this nitrogen is very important to reach to the soil from soil it get absorbed by the plant and by assimilation process it is converted into it, it is used to prepare proteins now this protein is eaten by animals as you know that herbivorous animals they eat these proteins plant parts right and when these animals eat actually it is what is happening the transfer of nitrogen gas is taking place nitrogen out from atmospheric nitrogen to the nitrogenous compound through then it goes to the plants and plants to the animals and when some carnivorous animal they eat other animals right and they also produce nitrogenous waste and finally what happens they will die so when they will die when they will die so when they will die when they will die when they will die so what happens what happens when they will die then their dead body is decomposed by again microorganisms this process is called ammonification what ammonification the dead organic matter is converted into again their basic elements right so this process is called ammonification again this is done by the some saprophytic fungi and some bacteria right then again see now nitrogenous compounds are present into the soil so these nitrogenous compounds are again utilized by some microorganisms some bacteria right and they utilize this nitrites and nitrates i converted it into again nitrogen gas and return to the environment see what happens some bacteria they are converting this ammonium iron and ammonia into nitrogenous compound and some microorganism some bacteria whatever the nitrogenous compound they are utilizing and again it converted into the nitrogen gas this process is called denitrification denitrification so by denitrification process the nitrogen is again sent to the environment in the form of gas and in this way the percentage of nitrogen gas remains constant that is 78% into the atmosphere right so this is called nitrogen cycle it is one of the important part of this lesson this entire lesson is very important so nitrogen cycle what happens the biological fixation right actually it is a biogeochemical cycle right biogeochemical nitrogen fixation so here the atmospheric nitrogen is deposited into the soil in the form of nitrogenous soil that can be absorbed by the plant with the help of blue green algae and bacteria by the process of nitrification then after the utilization these dead animals again they decompose their body again goes into the soil and here some denitrifying bacteria they convert this nitrite nitrogenous compounds into again nitrogen gas to send it back into the environment and thus it helps to remain the uh, percentage constant into the atmosphere that is 78% right so this is a very important cycle you have to do it three to five times learn it it is not at all very hard it is very easy it depends on your practice right so nitrogenous waste right nitrogenous waste this ammonification then again what is assimilation then again nitrification and denitrification these definitions are also very important right so you have to learn it microorganisms are also responsible for diseases right now first of all we have to understand what is the meaning of the word disease disease means a condition of our body in which we are unable to do our day to day activities right so unhealthy body is caused as disease is called as disease the body which is unhealthy isn't it physically mentally or some internal disorders are also there so some microorganisms are responsible for that so diseases are of two type number one is communicable diseases 
what it is called communicable diseases or one more name is there for this infectious diseases right which can get infection which can get infection from patient to healthy person so communicable diseases how we can define a communicable diseases diseases which can spread from a patient to a healthy person right from one person to many other persons right they are called communicable diseases see this is a patient what it is a patient and this patient if it sneezes in the public places right if he whatever the things he is touching coughing right or whatever the food we are sharing with this patient then these healthy people they will also affect by the same disease within few days so the disease which will cause or which is causes from patient to healthy persons such diseases are called communicable diseases such example is that a uh, tb is there cold is there influenza is there chicken pox is there dysentery cholera ringworm food poisoning hepatitis then malaria dengue chikungunya num and number of diseases are there so the diseases which spread from a patient to healthy person such diseases are called communicable diseases and these communicable diseases can spread their mode of transmission is also different right some communicable diseases they spread by air some are by water some by direct contact some are spread by food right and some are spread by the insect also insects are called vectors because they carry germs from uh, this one person to another person so they are called as vectors right these insects are called vectors so first we will see that diseases which are caused by air some diseases is spread through the air their mode of transmission is air for example tb tuberculosis then cold is there influenza chicken pox polio so these are the diseases which is caused by the air then by water dysentery is there cholera is there so this germs they spread through water and causes dysentery and cholera then by direct contact right skin diseases are there which are can spread by direct contact ringworm is among them then by food food poisoning is also there right food poisoning is there and again hepatitis and cholera is there which can be caused by the contaminated food as well as water because these germs they enter in our body okay so by any mean then insects through insects malaria and dengue are caused they are actually plasmodium what plasmodium anopheles is responsible for causing malaria female anopheles so communicable are the diseases which can spread from patient to hel healthy persons so this patient to healthy persons are called communicable diseases or infectious diseases and second type already we have learned in our lower classes right if you remember that deficiency diseases these deficiency diseases are called non communicable diseases they do not spread they do not spread from one person to another person in fact the reason is that the lack of particular nutrient in their regular diet for a long period such diseases are called deficiency diseases examine uh, for example night blindness goiter anemia so so many examples are there rickets is also there so they they do not spread from one person to another right but communicable diseases they are dangerous because they spread from one person to other person by the mode of food water air contact and insects so that's the reason we have to be very alert for to avoid ourselves in contact with these things right so we have to be every time very alert regarding the communicable diseases right we should keep proper distance whenever we are meeting with the patient who is having communicable diseases and very few medicines are available the communicable diseases which are caused by viruses right we have learned about the antibiotics antibiotics they can fight against bacterial germs right bacteria fungus right but what happens these viruses 
these antibiotics will not work against the viruses and that is the reason the diseases caused by viruses is very dangerous for that we have to understand the uh, vaccination process in our next session we will go for the vaccination process so understood so microorganisms they are causing disease to the animals human beings and plants also so first we will see that uh, how they are causing diseases to the human being right so first of all you see that uh, viruses they are responsible for different kinds of flu and chicken pox chicken pox is caused by viruses and what is the name of that particular virus is varicella zoster varicella zoster is caused by it is a name of uh, viruses which is causing chicken pox in children right polio is also there so many diseases are there but we will discuss only few examples here from textbook if you go through the textbook you will get number of example that you will write in your notebook now see bacteria bacteria is causing tb what is the long form of tb tuberculosis what tuberculosis the person who is suffering from tb right whenever he is coughing that cough is very dangerous because these toxins are present which is responsible for the spread of this and what is the name of that bacteria salmonella typhi what is the name of salmonella typhi it is a name of bacteria which is responsible for the disease called tuberculosis right now see protozoa protozoa are also dangerous because plasmodium right in that female anopheles is there right which is responsible for malaria so female anopheles is mosquito when that mosquito bites then it is causing this is called malaria chikungunya dengue is also there you can find out which uh, mosquitoes are responsible for that and what kind of water they require whether they uh, breed on dirty water stagnant water or clean water that also you should find out okay and tell me then next again these viruses bacteria protozoa are they only causing diseases to the animals and human beings no they are affecting every living things plants plants cannot get saved by this some kind of bacteria and viruses see here wheat wheat is also having one disease called a rust of wheat which is caused by the air and seeds right so these microorganisms are also responsible for the disease of wheat right the next is a lady's finger lady's finger sometimes you might have seen that yellowish vein mosaic of bind so this is caused because of virus this is caused because of virus and this is taken by the insect those who are moving here and there this insect they are actually doing the work of vectors carriers they supply or they uh, carries or uh, transfer right this is causing germs from one place to another so lady's finger is also suffering from this this is yellowish when mosaic of bindi then some citrus fruit fruits like sour fruits right orange is there amla is there isn't it so these are also not away from microorganism microorganisms they are also causing diseases to them and this is called citrus canker what is the name of disease citrus canker and these diseases are generally to the fruits which are sour in test and this is caused by bacteria the mode of transfer is air the mode of transfer is air so in this way this complete chart has given in your textbook you should write in your notebook and learn them to attend the exam okay so these are very important so we have seen that plants and animal disease and bacteria viruses are responsible for that microorganisms are responsible for the diseases right these viruses bacteria are there so what should be done to get protection against these microorganisms so we can get protection with the help of vaccines right edward jenner right edward jenner first prepared vaccine against this smallpox in the year 1798 right so what is meant by vaccine and how it is prepared right so what things are needed to prepare vaccine vaccine is what vaccine is made up of dead or weakened microorganisms or germs 
right dead and vacant what happens in vaccine when they prepare this vaccine they are injecting dead and vacant germs this is called germs into healthy person now what will happen as soon as this dead and vacant dead or vacant uh, microorganisms or germs enters pathogen enters in our body then our body immune systems start activation it will be alert and immediately as foreign invader any germs enter in our body our immunity starts fighting against them right it will produce antibodies to fight against germs and what happens this is a very important activity so in future suppose the same kind of germ is entering in our body at that time our body will be prepared for that because already we we fought against that invader or germs right in our childhood so that is called vaccination right vaccine is produced by a dead or weakened germs right that is injected in our body that healthy person's body it will remain into the body to fight against the future attacks of the particular uh, bacteria or viruses right so this is called vaccination right uh, you might have um, learn about or you have experienced when you were child right at that time your parents they took you to the hospitals for this all vaccination number of vaccinations are there right from your birth to the age of 10 up to 10 years also we have we have to be vaccinated right to stay against this uh, to stay healthy against this this is causing germs nowadays you have learned that polio right polio cholera diphtheria whooping cough many these diseases are there caused by bacteria and viruses right so polio has been eradicated from our country because of this vaccination camp because of this vaccination camp the awareness regarding the vaccination is important and for that the government is using a number of famous personalities right they are using actors cricketers to make uh, people aware regarding the importance of vaccination if they give vaccination to their kids in a childhood only right when they are small then this germ these vaccines they remain in their body and they be they will be ready to tackle the future attack of these microorganisms right so this is very important the first vaccine is made by the edward jenner in 70 17 98 right in 1798 so you have to learn about this edward jenner right please pay attention uh, cholera diphtheria and polio these all are the diseases which can be prevented by vaccination right so dear students we have completed this lesson right uh, lesson number two of standard eight what is the name of the lesson name of the lesson is microorganism friends and four in which we have learned that microorganisms and their types there are four kinds of microorganism bacteria fungi algae protozoa virus is on the boundary line of living and non-living things because virus cannot reproduce by their own they need host body to reproduce to uh, multiply their cells right that the reason they are attacking on host body and utilizing their cell mechanism to develop or to increase their to multiply their numbers then we have learned about the benefit beneficial use of microorganisms for uh, industrial use that is commercial use they are increasing fertility of the soil they are doing decomposition helping our mother health for the cleaning system and they are also used to make alcohol and convert milk into uh, curd right then harmful effect means how they are harmful and causing different types of diseases right and by learning their properties features we have prepared the vaccines Right, to fight against the microorganism they are causing disease to the plant as well as animals right you might have learned about the anthrax this bacteria right this bacteria is related with the, um, the sorter's disease right uh, in our seventh standard we have learned lesson number three sorter's disease anthrax is there uh, that is uh, called that occupational hazardous occupational hazardous disease then preservatives are there in this preservatives we have learned about the uh, how the chemicals are used to preserve the food among that one preservative is there sodium benzoate right sodium benzoate is there 
what is preservatives in that sodium benzoate this is one of the important chemical it is used and one more example has given that you will read the lesson and you will get it you will uh, read the lesson and you will get it you will read the lesson and you have to find out and underline in textbook right so if you read the lesson you will see that chemicals right some chemicals are added in preservatives they are sodium metabisulfate and sodium benzoate right so keep it in mind find out in textbook and what homework i am giving you you have to draw all the diagrams of this lesson all the diagrams of this lesson for example amoeba is there paramecium is there spirogyra viruses and rhizopus mucor so these all diagrams you will draw and label them in our regular notebook right so we have completed this lesson even though if you have any doubt you can contact me anytime right i am ready to clear your doubts right to clear your queries always welcome let's see how many will call me okay thank you